Hi, my name is Richard Leiter, a self-published author of literary fiction. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Thoughts on Writing. Well, I had so much fun um, doing my show and tell of the pictures I painted in the last two and a half years that I've decided to uh, show you just a few more and making um, appropriate comments as I go along. Um, so here we go. I'm going to pause it now and start showing you just about, again, just about seven or eight. Uh, I don't want to make the video too long, so here we go. Okay, I mentioned how um, I was always interested in Juan Miro um, uh, for, for ever since I was, I guess, uh, in my 20s. And um, since I had never attempted painting representationally before, the human figure or the human face, um, I was very much drawn to Miro because it's basically uh, bright colors. Um, I was able to copy many of his paintings with reasonable success. And of course, this is not a copy of a Moreau painting. This is my own um, abstract painting. I guess it's kind of done in, in a moreau like style. Um, this is a painting that I think is of um, Salvador Dali. I think you can capture the, um, the flamboyant um, Dali-esque mustache there. Um, and I do think it, it does look like him. I had an awful lot of fun doing this. And I just love the bright colors in it, too. Okay, I'm going to show you another one now. Okay, one more abstract painting. Now, this painting, mind you, was not done a long time ago. This was done relatively recently while I was still um, uh, painting all of these uh, faces, uh, copying paintings from the Renaissance and, and, um, and so on. Um, it's, an abs it's a surrealistic painting, I guess you'd call it, of, um, of a young girl at the beach. The young girl is in the, with the white hair reduced in size to like a stick figure with hooks at the end. I guess those would be her hands and feet. Um, there's the, um, the, the ocean and there's the beach itself. And then on the uh, left hand corner, uh, there's a kind of a um, um, mysterious figure, um, kind of ominous figure also, which is a threatening figure, which is, um, seems to be approaching the young girl who has her back turned towards the figure is unaware of its presence and um, part of the reason I painted this picture was that it gave me an excuse to use um, the color yellow a pure yellow straight from the tube when I painted this amorphous threatening figure Okay, I'm going to go on to another one now. Okay, this is also a relatively new picture painted in the last year. It's a picture of a uh, New, new Guinea um, headhunter, which I just happened to find in... Um, it's, a, it's a copy, I guess, of a photograph, which I just stumbled across, and I was very, very taken by the... Um, starkness of it, the savagery of it. Um, let's try to get a better picture of it. There you can see he has, um, I guess, uh, a mask on his, on the top of his hair or pinned to his hat or whatever he has there. Um, the, 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 um, the yellow of the face is what did it for me. Um, it compelled me to copy it. And the more I look at it, hold on a second. The more I look at it, the more I think this is kind of how I regard civilization nowadays. Um, beyond the flimsy veneer of the rule of law 
and beyond all of the grand-sounding institutions we have and, and charitable organizations and, um, and awards that we are constantly giving each other for um, humanitarian um, um, excellence and, and so on and so forth, I basically see civilization as this, as this head, as this cannibal, Beyond all of that, we are all cannibals, just kind of eating each other. And um, it's a very, very stark, bleak, frightening, and yet hypnotic view of humanity. I did not always feel this way about humanity. I kind of felt nothing about humanity because I didn't know enough. I hadn't experienced enough of life in order to have a firm opinion about what humanity was. But now I do. Okay, I'm going to go on to another painting now. Okay, here's another painting which was done relatively recently. Uh, it's, it was an attempt to copy a self-portrait by a Polish painter by the name of Stanislaw Witkiewicz, W-I-T-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. His nickname is Witkasi, which is W-I-T-K-A-C-Y. That's the name, that's the artist name that he kind of goes by. And this is based on uh, Vitkasi's self-portrait done in 1924. Now, my picture looks a little bit different than Vitkasi's self-portrait. Um, I don't know whether this was because I intended it or because I'm just not that great a painter. But to me, this picture represents my conception of the devil. Um, I'm reminded of the uh, Yiddish um, writer Isaac Beshevitz Singer, uh, who when asked whether he believed in God or not, responded, well, I don't know about God, but I certainly do believe in the devil. Um, yes, um, it's the devil to me. Not, the devil to me doesn't have horns and a, and, and a tail and, and, a, and cloven hoofs. Um, you see the red from the flames of fire, um, from the flames of hell, of course, being reflected in his, in his face and in his, in his outfit. But beyond that, he's kind of a small, um, slender framed um, person, um, doesn't look very large or imposing. But I find it to be a very frightening portrait. If you look at his eyes, there's nothing in them. There's nothing in them but mockery. There's nothing in them but um, endless mirrors reflecting back at you. And you can see the nose, the nostril is flared as if again he is sneering at you with, with a certain amount of contemptuousness. And there's a faint knowing smile on his lips. This is not the kind of a person that I would want to get into a debate with. He would, he's, the devil, the devil is a master debater. No matter how good you are, the devil is better. So, my advice is, don't argue with the devil, whatever the devil means to you these days. Don't argue with it. It will always beat you in an argument, but that doesn't mean that the devil's argument is correct or that he is right. You stick to what you know in your heart is good and true, and the hell with the devil. Okay, I'll go on to the next picture now. Okay, back again. Um, now, this was supposed to be a, an attempt at copying um, a portrait of Madame Moitessier um, by Angre. Well, I wasn't quite able to copy it, was I? Uh, but I tried to do something as interesting as I can with it. Um, the background is, of course, completely different. Um, she doesn't really look like Madame Moitessier. Um, in the similar vein to my um, Vitkasi um, attempted a, at, at a, at a, at a, at a self-portrait. Um, to me, this woman resembles 
the whore of Babylon in um, the book of Revelations in the New Testament. Um, again, I find absolutely nothing human about her. Not an ounce, not a shred of human compassion. Her eyes um, show nothing but coldness. Um, she's, she's not an ugly woman. She's, she's, she's not pretty either. She's kind of an indifferent looking woman. A bit shabby, which kind of adds to the, the frightfulness of the picture. Um, above her, her hair, you have, um, well, there's really just three different colored lines, which I, I did by, uh, by uh, painting directly from the tube. Um, I think it's red, yellow, and it's supposed to be, I think, uh, ultramarine blue, although it looks black here. That's her crown, the crown of the Whore of Babylon. I think about that a lot nowadays in light of the world's current situation. Um, I liked having done this portrait very much. I think it's very arresting. However, I don't um, display it in my, in my home uh, because I find it too disturbing. Oh, by the way, um, I also enjoy very much doing the brooch on her dress. Um, I made her dress not a solid color, but kind of impressionistic, because I've never done that before with, with a lot of dots. And I've never done a brooch before, which is supposed to be ref which is supposed to show metal of some sort. I wanted to I wanted to find out how do you paint metal, so um, so I was I, I was very very um, engaged with, with with painting that brooch. Hold on a second. All right, goodbye, Whore of Babylon. Let's go on to the next painting. Okay, back again. Um, on a somewhat brighter note, this is a attempt at a copying. Uh, this is an attempt at copying um, a portrait um, by Alice Neal. Um, it's called Pregnant Julie and Algis. 1967. Um, this woman in the in the original Alice Neal portrait is pregnant. She's lying on a bed um, naked, uh, and her belly is she's pretty pretty far gone along into her pregnancy. She looks like she's about um, eight months um, or more, um, and her husband, who is fully dressed, is sort of lying next to her. So I just took um, the, the the woman's face and. It did what I could with it. Um, and the way it turned out, um, since it's taken out of context, um, to me it looks like a portrait of Ophelia from Hamlet. Um, notice all of the flowers in her hair, which is very reminiscent of, of Ophelia. Um, she's a very, very attractive, very pretty young woman. Um, and in the right hand, lower right hand corner, there's, there's a figure. It kind of looks like an alien who's kind of like walking or running away from her. What is that figure? Is that the figure, the spirit of death? Is that some kind of an imp that's responsible for her, her suicide or her death um, by falling into a river or a stream? Um, it's a very, very weird figure. Uh, which I think complements very nicely the the loveliness of, of the woman herself. And of course, uh, once again, these pictures were all done in acrylic paint. Okay, I'll go on to the next one. Okay, this is a kind of a freehand copy of... Um, a Portrait of a Polish Woman by Soutine. Um, I've always had kind of a love affair with Soutine and Modigliani. Um, of course, the reason for the, is obvious. I, I, I love uh, Soutine's impetuous, as, do, as does everybody else, his um, impetuous, wild use of, uh, of brush strokes and, and color. His favorite color is red also. Um, 
I've, I've always, I've always, I have a book by him. I've, I've periodically looked at his pictures, um, studied them. Um, the only problem with Soutine for me and for Modigliani is that if you want to learn how to, how to um, copy the human figure and the human face, they're not the best artists to try to learn from. I mean, Soutine's faces are just so, dis everything, his anatomy is just so distorted that you, you're just not going to be able to do that. Um, sometimes in some of his pictures, he has figures, I think he has um, one picture of a, of, of, a, of a boy who has six fingers. I mean, you're not going to get anatomical accuracy by studying um, Soutine. And um, as, as I began c copying um, pictures from the Renaissance and, and Angre and so on, um, I began to appreciate more that as much as I was drawn to Soutine and Modigliani, they were kind of a dead end for me in terms of trying to uh, teach myself how to paint figures and and how to improve. Uh, they're just not the people for me. Um, the background is has nothing to do with Soutine. He has had a very solid background in this painting. I actually painted the background over another painting. You can see in the top left um, um, the top left above uh, the Polish girl's hair, you can see some writing there, a couple of letters. A couple of letters there. That's because um, before I painted this picture, I tried to copy um, um, a painting by Modigliani, which didn't turn out so well. And I was so disgusted with it, I didn't even bother um, whiting it out and putting new primer on it. I just painted over it. So it's, uh, that's why you see that. Um, I think I got the, uh, the, the, the Soutine look pretty well, though. I mean, the, the cheeks, the ruddy cheeks, uh, the texture. Um, I tried to give it as much richness and wildness as I could. And his whites, his whites are fascinating on tablecloths, on dresses, um, because his whites are not really white. They have so many colors in them, so many subtle colors in them. Um, it's just wonderful. So I, I, I was aware of that and, and did my best um, at trying to do justice to a soutine um, white um, fabric. I do um, display this painting, and I do enjoy looking at it from time to time. And since I'm so, I'm going to show you one more painting, and it's kind of like a a a, 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 um, a pair, a matching pair with the Soutine painting. And I think I've alluded to it already. It would be um, Modigliani. So let me just put this down and show you that one. Hold on. Okay, back again. And, and uh, as with Soutine, Modigliani has always been one of the great um, loves of my life um, ever since I was a kid. Um, part of the reason that I was drawn, I think, to Modigliani originally was since I couldn't draw, um, was intimidated by the whole process of drawing. You look at Modigliani and the faces are so stylized, um, it's kind of easy, it's, or it's easier to try to copy a Modigliani than it is to copy a painting by Raphael or Titian, that's for damn sure. Um, I actually used to take a, photoco a, a, a photograph in an art book of a Modigliani painting, put it in a, uh, a Xerox photocopier, make a copy, and then make a copy of that one, enlarging each subsequent copy. And finally, when it was large enough, I would put it on a canvas and I would, um, you know, put charcoal on the back of the um, piece of paper and I would uh, and I would to trace it and I would get around the drawing that way and you can actually do a wonderful job that way 
uh, if you're skillful enough. Um, the problem also with Modigliani was that um, um, I had no idea when I tried to do all these copies many years ago, um, I knew nothing about, about, about palettes, about the actual pigments that Modigliani used. I wasn't aware of that. Um, when I saw a yellow in a painting by Modigliani, I didn't know if it was a yellow or whether it was a yellow ochre. I just wasn't familiar with it or not. Um, um, and, recent, and of course, when I started teaching myself how to paint for real, um, all, the, all the, uh, the master copies I showed you the other day, um, I, I, I became very, very much aware, not just of the colors used, because the colors themselves mean nothing, um, it's the actual palette used. It's not really helpful to know whether you've, whether Modigliani used a red in his painting, what kind of a red? Did he use uh, cadmium red deep, light, medium? Um, what did he use? Um, and I become more and more aware of that. Um, I've never done a, a Modigliani, now that I, I'm a, very much aware of his palette, for instance, I always used to try to copy uh, Jean Hebuterne wearing a yellow sweater. Um, every decade I would try to copy it. But again, I didn't know what his palette was. I was living in New York City at the time, um, at the Guggenheim, uh, and the Guggenheim Museum um, displays uh, Jean Hebertin wearing a, a yellow sweater. So I would go there and I would look at it. Um, finally, it hit me. I know pretty much every color that he uses. Um, I know that the yellow sweater really isn't yellow, it's yellow ochre. And I know that the background is not really a black and white gray. It's really made from using yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and white. Um, you can get a much richer gray that way. I, I didn't know about any of this. I just had to learn from trial and error and from doing research on the internet. So maybe someday I'll do one more copy attempt at a copy of Jean Hebertin, where Hebutern wearing a yellow sweat turtleneck sweater and maybe this time I'll do a, a, something really approaching the original and if I do and if I'm successful with it well I'll show you um, anyway this is not a copy of uh, Modigliani this is my own um, invented uh, Modigliani um, using what I know about him I just did this about I don't know six months ago so it's got all the elements in it that you'd expect from a Modigliani it's got the chest of drawers in kind of a glowing uh, deep red or ultramarine or, or, or alizarin crimson or, or Venetian red whatever he used you've got his characteristic simple blocks of color um, uh, let's go a little bit closer yeah, I just sort of just off the top of my head without looking at anything. I just did this face um, and try to, I kept the palette very limited. Uh, I try, I used, I try to do the face basically just using white, titanium white, um, yellow ochre, and not cadmium red light because that's very expensive. I use something called, py, um, called naphthol crimson light, I believe. Um, or pyro red light, I forget which now, but they those very, very closely approximate the cadmium red light. So I just used those colors, I used a little bit of blue for the shadow in the eyes, and that was it. Um, certainly has enough texture. And so this painting I, I have in my home, and I, I have it hanging next to the soutine. Like I say, they're kind of a matching pair. So um, anyway, that's it. That's all I'm going to show you now. And um, once again, thank you very much for, uh, for listening to me and for, and for looking at my paintings.